all right, Jules, let's, let's continue our kind of united thought exercise here. And, um, and again, on the record, I'm not sure he's going to go back three straight away. I, I still think you want to bet in, you need to win points, move up the table. Yeah. I think you can, you can insert a lot of your concepts. You know, you're, you're, th- th- there's a tactical formation and then there's, a, there's, there's concepts of how you want to play. And they don't always necessarily overlap. So I think you can introduce those with a 4-2-3-1 if that's how yeah. you want to play. Obviously, you can interpret it differently perhaps than the way Ten Hag did. But, but let's continue. Let's try to think longer term about this 3-4-2-1. We, we were talking about our center forward. Let, let's, let's move to the front now. Our center forward is Hoyland, I'm assuming. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So in terms of the two behind, we're talking about moving a winger there, essentially, or Bruno or Mason Mount. Yeah. So on paper, or you mentioned Zergze. I wouldn't I'm not sure about Zerxe because Zerxe is literally the only other center forward you have. Yeah. So, you know, and Hoyland's not gonna play every minute of every game, right? The issue with Bruno is those two, when I watch sporting, those guys have to cover a lot of ground and they, they're actually quite involved in the press. Mm. I'm not sure that is Bruno's strength. So there's been some suggestion. Maybe you play Bruno deeper. Yeah, with in the one two of Ugarte or Casemiro or Mainu. Because if you look at the the two midfielders that they used, you know, generally, yeah, they're dynamic over a lot of ground, but you always have one that's more defensive and one that's actually attacks yeah. a lot more. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's and comes through the middle. Possible. That yeah. could be Bruno. Yeah. Um in terms of the wing backs, and, and I think this is dangerous to it's a dangerous game to play when we say he's imagining, right? Because if you see Sporting now, the guy they have, the, that, that Kenda guy, yeah, fine, the 17-year-old, yeah. he's a winger. He was always yeah, a striker, yeah. right? Yeah. And yet he's playing as a wing back. So I think a lot of people are looking at this. Okay, well, United have two attacking wing backs and Dalo and Masrao. He surely is going to play them there. I don't think he's going to view it that way. Um, from what I read, from people who know more about Sporting than I do, also his wing backs aren't, symmetrical he generally has one that goes and attacks and you know is essentially a winger the other wing back often comes inside and and i'm thinking Mazrawi, for example mm-hmm. is the kind of guy who you know he was he was a central midfielder early in his career we saw him even play at number 10 in the europa league he's somebody who maybe on the right could be the one who comes inside especially if you play ugarte casemiro you want a passer there that could be a role for him yeah. Um, on the left, I'm wondering, it was suggested that longer term again, somebody like Ahmad Diallo might be a better fit. Um, reason being Ahmad Diallo is left-footed. So, yeah. and he often, and on the left side, he likes to have, or he's had in Ken and somebody, somebody who can go and deliver a, a natural left foot to deliver crosses rather than somebody coming inside. I mean, yeah. it's all speculation. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, Luke Shaw is the best left wing back that this squad, if he's ever fit and can play, that this squad can have anyway. So I think he'd be perfect there. If you don't have Luke Shaw, um, I just, I'm just, i just not sure in the Premier League you can afford to have a winger playing at wing back simply because, obviously, the lack of defensive ability will be very, very obvious, will be targeted. And even if you play really with the back five, I, I think that's a massive risk that I'm not sure I would take. Personally, I would much rather have Dalot and Shaw, Dalot, Masrawi, Masrawi and Shaw as my wing backs than trying to make Garnacho a wing back or Ahmad a wing back or Rashford a wing back or whoever else. Like he did at Sporting with his young winger because, again, his Sporting is the Portuguese league, and I think this is very different, but he might try. And we've seen in the past, some things like that kind of worked. I just, I just think that if you already have the right players to fit in there, why would you try something different? Well, I think the argument might be, are those the right players that... Well, I think Dalot Masra, we sure, are much better wing back than anybody else in that squad, naturally. But you, we use the term wing back in a certain way. We're... we're to define the position, there's different ways to interpret it, right? You yeah, can, yeah, but I mean, you need some 
people who still defend, man. You can't just have Garnacho and Rashford that use two wing backs. This doesn't make much sense. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not suggesting, by the way, no, having no, no. Garnacho. I mean, I'd be very surprised. I'm all for it if you want, but I'd be very I, surprised. Well, I'm saying is, but this is what he's done at Sporting. He's yeah, taken. Again, when he says, I need to adapt, I can't do at United what I've done at Sporting, surely this is part of the conversation. Okay. Um, when I go back to his first uh, team that. His sort of sporting winning side when he had like sort of Jean Mario at, as, as like the number 10, as was one of the two tens and stuff. The first thing to admit that, that comes out is you have extremely high energy yeah, players. High intensity, yeah. And that is another, I think, if you want, mark against Bruno. I'm wondering if maybe the solution is, especially if you go with Ugar, some combination of Ugar, Casemiro, Kabi. Kabi Meno is another one who. Yeah, could play higher up. Although, if. I don't know the Kobe Mayno in terms of intensity, in terms of ability to cover ground. Kobe Mayno is not a top tier athlete the way Ugarte is, for example. Kobe Mayno is more about more about quality. Yeah. Again, he's nineteen. I don't. I mean, maybe you can develop it. Maybe you can't. I think that's going to be possibly a tricky. The Mayno Ugarte in the two. I think that's going to be a little tricky because if you are, if you start asking Kobe Meno to go and cover a ton of ground and go to the side yeah. and whatever, Kobe Meno at ten. If you ask him to press, I don't think that that's possible. I, th I think. I mean, Marcus Edwards was a key player for Sporting under Amorim, and he's never been that massive press machine either. So you know, I think he can also work if one of your two tens is not the most intense, like Edwards was. I still think that can work. And then you have the issue of resource allocation, right? Because United, because they're the team of wingers, you know, Rashford, Garnacho, Diallo, um, Anthony. Yeah, what do you do with them? You, you kind of have to sit them down and say, listen, in my team, you either become the swingback person that we talked about, mm -hmm. that Gavin Jules talked about, yeah. and Jules says thinks you can't defend, yeah. prove him wrong, or you become a number 10, who gives me a lot of energy and really helps Hoyland when we press from the front in that way. Um, and it's going to be interesting. It's going to be up to them to adapt. You know, I mean, yeah, we, we, we've only seen Garnacho play as a winger, run in straight lines. It doesn't mean this has to define who he is as a player and as a person, right? No, true. Uh, Rashford, we think, I mean, he's played centrally as a forward. Can he play centrally? I think, I mean, I think when he started, he played in the two as well. With, with Van Hal occasionally. I mean, could he be a 10? Can he reinvent himself? I, this is, I think, the big challenge for a lot of these players that if this new system does come in, yeah, they're going to have to adapt. Yeah, sure. The only thing is when you're 14th or 13th in the table and you need points, like you said, and you won't have time to work because you've got games every three days with your beloved uh, Europa League, then I think yeah. it's, it's, it's tricky. If you have plenty of time... I don't know, like let's say an Eddie Howe to move Joel Linton from a number nine to midfield, a midfielder a number eight, as well as they did. I think you need a lot of time to work with those players. I think, uh, unfortunately for Amorim, the last thing he will have is time yeah. to work on things. So I think that makes it harder. Of course, you can try to shape Rashford in a different way, or Garnacho, or Ahmad. Anthony, I've lost faith, and I'm not sure what I can do. Or like you said earlier, Gabby, you just go back to a more traditional 4-2-3-1 where maybe people fit more already in the squads and keep your principles, but just right. move them from what you've done at Sporting into a back four. The only thing is, he looks so dogmatic. He looks like being a very dogmatic coach. I just wonder if he's ready to give up that 3 4 That's one. the challenge. And also, he's a younger coach, obviously. And we know that a lot of coaches, when they're young and are successful initially... They're very dogmatic. I have to tell the Carlo Ancelotti story of yeah. saying, like, I don't need Zola because I'm going to play a 4-4-2 and he can't play on the wing. And, you know, so, and, and then you kind of go on this journey. And I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he comes and he accepts he needs to be less dogmatic straight away. Um, I wonder if we're not going to see maybe a 4-2-3-1 or maybe a 4-3-3 maybe even, albeit, with Bruno playing deeper um, and somebody else kind of learning the 10. I, I don't... Yeah? I, 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 I don't know. But 
it is imperative that they move up the table. It is for, I think, essentially two reasons. One is obviously the financial side of it. They were very close to bre breaching profit and sustainability rules. Yeah, um, it's going to impact what they can do in the summer. Now, it is true that the whole squad, their salaries go down if they don't qualify for the Champions League and blah, 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 and that's designed to negate this possibility. But still, you need wiggle room. Yeah. You need It's easier to track players if you're in the Champions League, sponsors, whatever else. And secondly, the clock is ticking on Jim Ratcliffe. You know, he does not have this team in perpetuity. Yeah. At some point, you know, the Glazers are going to come knocking and saying like, all right, what do we do now? So... Um, so it is important, I think, and we might see a more pragmatic one. I just want to round this out by looking at Rob Dawson, wrote an excellent piece on, yeah. our, on our website, laying out his five priorities. Yeah, like the to-do um, list. His, yeah, the to-do list. One is to pick his wingbacks. Yeah. This is based on the assumption that it's 2 4 2 one and yeah. if he does go down that route, then I would agree with you. If it is wingbacks, maybe it will be Mizrahi and Dalot straight away. Yeah. Um, Evans as a placeholder until Lenny Oro is ready. Yeah. Maguire, Lindelof, no? Yeah, maybe, no, maybe. You're, you're maybe making faces. You yeah, because I'm not convinced, as you know, that I'm not the biggest <laughs> fans of theirs, but yeah. They, they I think he played with Lindelof. Ruben Amarin did. At Benfica? Yeah. Maybe. With a, with a very young Lindelof. Um, find a place for Rashford. That might be tricky. Now, if we expanded to find a place for Rashford, could be on the bench, could be at another <laughs> club. Yeah, true. Um, because I, I think Amarim only takes his job if everything's on the table. It's not like he comes in and I don't believe anybody at United said to him, oh, but Rashford has to be in the yeah, team. Yeah, I agree. Like, uh, there's no way. He would Definitely. not have taken this job Definitely. without it. Uh, develop Hoyland. Obviously, no brainer. Yeah, I would argue. There's potential there. Develop Zerxe as well, since yeah, you just spent a lot of money on him. True, true, true. Um, okay, turn Old Trafford into a fortress. Please. I think he means galvanize yeah, the home yeah, fans, yeah, sure. bring the feel good. I think we're pretty sure that's he's got that under yeah. control. I think the fans are ready to go and, and support uh, Amory Man United. For this new era. And then finally play with a pattern, which, you know. Yeah, the style would be important, but surely, uh, as we've said, one of the most dogmatic, young, bright manager in European football coming to Old Trafford uh, with his ideas, with his principles, with all that style that he has, very defined. There's no doubt that it might take a little bit of time, especially if he changes formation. But inevitably, very soon we we see his path on his like his uh, touch on this on this team for sure. What I would caution a little bit when I hear play with a pattern and you hear dogmatic and so on, Bruno Fernandez does not naturally fit into a pattern. And when you ask him to do pattern type stuff you lose a lot of what makes him a phenomenal player. The ability yeah. to, Im to improvise and so on. So I think, again, and given that Bruno just signed that enormous contract extension, which I thought was absurd giving him that deal at that point when he had two years left, I just wonder, again, that's going to be another balancing act. I just wonder if, you know, deep in his heart, Ruben Amarine said, I would have felt more comfortable if we hadn't locked ourselves into Bruno. But time will tell. Mm -hmm.